Come on, lift your hands up. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Oh, glory to God. Thou I am he commands have provided great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great Somebody better praise him in this place. When you couldn't depend on somebody else, you could always depend on God. And I'm telling you, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, God will always be faithful. He will always have your back. You won't waste your time depending on him because before you even ask him, he's already got the answer. Before you get to your destination, he already beat you to that place. Somebody better praise him right now. We have a faithful God. My God. Ooh That's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's the truth. I don't think I could praise a God that's not faithful. Hallelujah. He's, he's faithful to answer your prayers. He's faithful to lead and guide you. Hallelujah. He's faithful to speak to you when you need to be spoken to. He's faithful to heal you. He's faithful to deliver you. He's faithful to save you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I just, that blessed me today. I got a faithful God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's be seated. Let's talk about that. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of uh, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 through 13. This is our text. We have been doing a series and teaching on how grace teaches us godliness. Titus chapter 2, chapter two verse 11 says this, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. This grace is made available to everybody that's on the planet. He says, verse 12, though, teaching us. Now, because grace has been made available to everybody, if you don't believe it, you don't, if you don't receive it, somebody says, how did you do that? When you receive Jesus, see, Jesus is, is full of grace and truth. You receive Jesus, you receive that grace. And just because it's made available for everybody doesn't mean everybody's received it. But now the Bible says those who have believed and received this grace, then grace now will teach you. Other people just see grace as, as love and they see it as un unmerited favor. And, and we see it as, as someone who teaches us. Grace will teach us that denying or refusing ungodliness. Now, ungodliness is when you have no regard for God at all, you know. You can be a Christian and still disregard God, you see. He says, but grace will teach you to refuse ungodliness, refuse worldly lusts, and that we should live soberly and righteously, and that grace will teach us how to live godly in this present world. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope 
and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So while grace is teaching us, he says, you get your eyes on that great hope. While grace is teaching us, you get your eyes on the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so we're talking about godliness, and um, it, it's not a very difficult thing to understand, but it is important for us to understand what these things are so that we won't be robbed by religion and find ourselves, you know, thinking in a whole different way. So here's how we've been defining godliness. It means to have regard for God. If ungodliness is to totally disregard God, then godliness is to have regard for God. And so in order to have regard for God, this involves voluntary dependence upon God. Godliness is all about the individual who has set his life aside for God and totally depends on God. So now we're really getting into the really nitty gritty of the Christian life. And that the nitty gritty of a Christian life is living a life where you resign your will for God's will. It's, it's a life where you're saying, I, I, I volunteer because I'm a free moral agent, I can choose. I, I set my will and I volunteer to depend upon God. It's not a part-time thing. It's a life that you have chosen to live as you go down this, this journey and this path, as the Holy Spirit and you begin to, to work together uh, on this journey of finding yourself depending upon God. I don't expect for you to depend on God 100% right now, but I do expect for you to get on the journey where you're depending on God more and more and more, and maybe you get a place in your life where you're depending on God 90% of the time, 95% of the time. He is responsible for completing us, amen? And so a godly life is free from doubt. A godly life is, is uh, free from doubting his wisdom, doubting his love, doubting his goodness, doubting his provision. I mean, you're not doubting the things that you depend on. I depend on his wisdom, to, to learn to depend on his wisdom, learn to depend on his goodness, learn to depend on all of his provision. And so literally, just to put it down to the simplest point, dependence upon God excludes all dependence upon self. Dependence upon God excludes all dependence upon self. That's godliness. That's godliness. Now, uh, just a little bit more in, in review. So one of the things we looked at last week I, I thought was, was pretty important is the fact that as, uh, as people who have made their mind up to, the, to, to, to depend upon God, we've also made our mind up that we will not fail in our dependence, that we're gonna practice this, that uh, every day when we get up, maybe begin to, to voice that, you know what, I'm, I'm dependent upon God. I'm voicing that I'm dependent upon God. And so what we decided to do in this series that the believer's life that should be incomplete dependence upon God, and I want you to think about that. I want you to ask yourself the question, is my life in, de in, in, in complete dependence upon God? And the answer would be no. Okay, somebody says, well, how do you know? Because I'm a human and I know you. <laughs> I'm not talking about depending on God after you didn't try everything else and all that. I'm talking about living a lifestyle of complete unfailing dependence upon God. When you do that, you will find out what the Christian life is about, depending upon God. And so uh, there are different ways that have been included in the New Testament, especially and in the Bible, that if we look at it carefully, it teaches dependence upon God. For example, last week we looked at the issue of faith. Complete dependence upon God is taught through the teachings of faith. Somebody says, well, really? Yeah. You remember in Romans 4, verse uh, 21, Abraham gives the clearest definition of faith. Abraham was strong in faith because he was fully persuaded that God was able to do what God promised. And that was a situation where God promised them that they would have a, a child at a 100-year-old man, a 90-year-old woman, there's nothing else to depend on. If you're a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman, you can't look at anything in the natural and depend on that. 
now I understand why God allowed this to, to uh, turn out. You, 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 get, you, you, you become 100, you become 90, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to perform my promise because I'm going to show you it's not you, that we're not dependent on you. I, I want to show you that I can do what I said I will do without your help. Religion has involved you too much. You don't think that God can change somebody's life without you, and he can. God doesn't need you to be who he is. But we do need him to be who we are. And so he takes this 100-year-old man who has nothing to bring to the table except his dependence upon God. This 90-year-old woman who has nothing to bring to the table except her dependence upon God. And God showed up in that tent that day and did everything that needed to be done. And here is an absolute illustration of Abraham's faith, his faith was a dependence upon God to fulfill the promise. And so if we, if, we, if we define faith like that, and it's very clear in Romans 4, you see that a life of faith teaches you about a life of dependence upon God. That's what it's supposed to be. If your faith involves your selfish stuff, you have to question whether or not it's the right kind of way to operate faith. Because if you see here, Abraham had faith, or watch this, Abraham depended on God. That's what faith is. I define it like this. Faith in God is complete dependence upon God. Faith in God is complete dependence upon God. Now the just shall live by complete dependence upon God. Do you see this? It's impossible to please God without depending on God. You go through everywhere you, in the New Testament when you see this, I am, I am, I don't think I'm redefining faith. I, I don't think this is even the first time that, uh, you know, a, a teacher has, has brought this out. But I, I thought I needed to bring it out that the word of faith has to be with clarity now so that we won't take a definition of old that may involve self rather than involving dependence upon God without self. Any, anybody hear me in here? So, when you say, I walk by depending on God and not by depending on my intellect, that's what that scripture says, we walk by faith and not by sight. To walk by sight means you're not walking by faith. And to walk by sight means you're walking by your intellect. So if I walk by faith, I'm walking by depending on God and not depending on what I know. That's good. You deserve a blow pop anyway. You understand? That's, that's what it is. And I'm asking you as Christians to get this, to get this, to become a habit in your life. I depend on God. I, this is just supposed to be a review. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and, 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 and move on to the next one. Last week, we closed with uh, emphasis upon the faithfulness of God that you should be uh, in a pretty good position of dependence upon God when you understand that God is faithful. It is so easy to depend on a God who is faithful. Surely the promises of God and his faithfulness teaches complete dependence upon him. This is why the Bible teaches on faithfulness. Why? If you can understand that you have a faithful God that his mercies are new every morning, that you cast your care on him because he cares for you, that he'll provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. He is faithful to do what he said. If you'll understand that God is faithful, guess what? You can depend on him. You can depend on him. You're not going to depend on somebody where you question whether or not they're faithful. And the Bible makes it clear. I gave you several scriptures last week. It makes it very clear that God is a faithful God and you can depend on him. Now, let's pick up with number three today. Now, this is awesome. This is awesome. We're looking at the five different ways the Bible teaches depending upon God. Maybe we didn't know it, but number three, practical sanctification teaches complete dependence upon God. Practical sanctification, sanctification, a church word, a religious word, 
even more emphasized in certain denominations, sanctified. I used to think sanctified people were people where the women would wear long dresses. Why they wear them long dresses all the time? They sanctified. Can I get a witness? I didn't, I didn't that's, my, that, that's my formal education on sanctification, which is why this is an excellent step to look at here because practical sanctification. To sanctify means to set aside for a purpose. To set aside for a purpose. Think about that now. To set aside for a purpose, for example, one who sanctifies himself unto God sets his life aside for God's purpose. As a Christian, have you set your life aside for the will and purpose of God, or have you set your life aside for you? Who's driving your car? Because I don't, I don't think we think about that. We become saved, we become Christian, we have the promise of heaven, and all that is good, but while you're here, who gets to play you as an instrument? Has your life, have you at any time in your life taken the time, go in your place of prayer and say, God, I am saved now, and so now I set my life aside for you? That's a serious time, serious moment. Maybe you have to go through a little bit more hell before you realize, I want my life to be set aside for God. I, um, I've, I've traveled eight million miles around this world and preached the gospel in, 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 in a lot of cultures that, but at the same time, I don't want to miss God, die, go to heaven, and then that's it. I want to set my life aside for his will and his purpose. And that's all I have to do for the next, when am I going to be 100? 30 years. That's it. He got it. I am his instrument. I am idle as an instrument. Somebody got to play me in order for me to have impact. Now, I got ahead of myself. Let me, let's, let me back up. I don't, I don't want to. I set my life aside for his purpose and his will. Now, this act recognizes God's will as governing in that life. When you, when you set your life aside, that one act recognizes God's will as governing in your life. Minister Haynes, you can remember when we started this thing, and every time something would come up, no matter what the question was, it was, let me go pray about it. Absolutely. Well, what did God say? And people thought, well, you guys are just too slow. You know, we can't ever get a yes or no out of you because y'all always saying, well, hold on, let me pray about it. What did God say? Well, I didn't know it at that time, but that was the appropriate response. Don't go doing stuff. That was the appropriate response because now his will is governing in your life. And this signifies, depends upon God. What it says is, even though you're a pastor or a leader of a business, something like that, I pause, Selah, because I've set my life aside for his will to govern my life. So I don't need to be governed by. There's a difference between a good idea and a God idea. Remember that? We live by that. A God idea, you don't have to ask God to bless it. It's already blessed. But a good idea may need some work. We can get God ideas. You don't have to be a bunch of good ideas. So Paul used these, the, used, used words that convey, convey the idea of dependence. Go to Romans 6, 13. He used these words. I must have read over these, this scripture really, really fast, but he says some very, very powerful things here. Uh, Neither yield your members as instruments unto unrighteousness unto sin. That is so powerful because look what he says here. He uses this word yield. Yield yourselves unto God. Now, what does it mean to yield? Let, let's use the traffic 
uh, that we drive in every day. When you see a sign that says yield, you're responsible for allowing that car to go ahead of you. All right, and then you go. And it's the same thing here. To yield to God is to allow him to go ahead of you. How many of you are allowing God to go ahead of you? Or do we go ahead of him and then we get in trouble, go back and see if we can find it? <laughs> yield yourself. Let him go ahead of you. All right, now watch this now. And then he says, uh, yield you, your, your members, as instruments. And this is what I was talking about a little bit more. I want to be detailed on this one. The, the word yield is the key word here to sanctification. In a yielded person's life, there is not a resistance to the will of God. When I yield to God, I'm not resisting his will. There is a no self-planning nor insistence upon one's own idea or rights, but complete dependence. So I'm not going to God with my plan. You know, I, I went to God, but not to get his plan. I went to God because I knew you were going to ask me if I'd gone to God, but I, I, I insist on in doing this. I, I'm smart. I have five PhDs, and therefore we're going to do this. That's not yielding. That's a religious thing, but there's no self-planning. When you yield to God, there's no self-planning. There's no insistence on doing things your way. And then he uses this word instrument, which I never really thought about. He says the word instrument, it, it signifies dependence. An instrument in and of itself is inactive. It depends on someone to use it. A harp is inactive without the fingers of the harpist. The, 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 the knife that is used by a surgeon to perform operations is inactive without the skill of that surgeon. It's an instrument. The piano all by itself is an instrument without a pianist behind it. All instruments mu must be yielded to some master's touch to be of value. And that's what Paul was talking about. Yield yourselves, members, yield your members as instruments of God. So the question I thought about is, who's playing you? Or have you been played? <laughs> I mean, think about this for a moment. Lord, I yield myself to you. And I am, I'm inactive. You know, so that's the other way around with church. We can't figure that out. We think we're more powerful by doing something without yielding. I'm an instrument. Lord, without you, I am of no use. I thought about this. I say no if and buts about it, Lord. If I'm an instrument and I shouldn't have any significance until you put your fingers and your hands on me, well, who have I allowed to play me? Myself? Demonic influence? or God. And I don't want to remain in ignorance allowing some crack jack demon to play me. This is, this is God's instrument. Some of you act like y'all don't, don't know what I'm talking about. When you hopped into bed with such and so, such and so, who was playing that instrument? 
some of you and some of that lust at the devil. But God wasn't playing that instrument. God says, I want to be responsible for your significance. You don't have to go to social media to try to get validation and significance. God says, if you yield yourself to me as instruments, glory to God, honey, I'll play you into glory. I'll play you into prosperity. I'll play you into healing. I'll play you into deliverance. That's, that's just something, sanctification is something we just play with. We just say stuff with our mouth, but we don't come to the realization, has this become a reality in me? How many times am I going to go ahead of the Holy Spirit? A job comes up. I, I don't say, Holy Spirit, what do you think first? I go ahead. What you paying? Yeah, I take it. And the Holy Ghost said, wait a minute. I was getting ready to take you another route where you would be able to go in and state your salary, state your work hours, state whether you want to work at home or work in the building, but you went ahead of me. And so many Christians accept the cheaper instead of the deeper. And the only way you're going to get the deeper is by yielding to the Holy Spirit and let Him lead and guide you and take you and play you and be an instrument. All instruments must be yielded to some master's touch to be of value. Who's your master? Who's been touching you? Who's been playing you? Once, once, that's, that's why it's important to come to church. That's why it's important to hear. That's why it's important to go to bed so you don't fall asleep while I'm talking, because I'm not going to get up here screaming and holler and act like I'm in a circus and try to keep you awake. If you're not listening and if you're not learning nothing, then you're probably not going to be able to change. You know, you change your thinking, then you change your life. But if you don't change your thinking, you're not going to change your life. There's nothing magical happening here at church. You don't come to church and some magic falls over you. I'm just going to come and sit and something, and it's going to magically change your old, dirty, nasty thinking. That's not how that happens. You have to listen to the Word, and that Word will go in and, and start changing your thinking and washing you. See, right now, if you're in here for the right reason, doing the right thing, you're being washed right now. You're, you're being cleansed. Jesus said, I spoke the Word, and they were cleansed. And right now, you're being cleansed. Where? In your thinking. People just don't get that. I, 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 can't, I can't explain it to you. Don't understand it for nothing. But when I go preach at other churches, of course, it never happens here. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I see people come in late, sit for five minutes, and then get up and leave like they got what they can. I'm thinking, and I want to say something, but you know you can't do that. You, you got to be polite. I want to say, hey, I, I think I used to do that then. Hey, where you going? <laughs> That's, that's before I got saved, Say, Where you going? <laughs> because I was hungry, I knew nothing's going to happen until you make a quality decision. It's, it's just like, you know, you're, you're, you're wanting to lose 100 pounds. It, it, that's not going to happen when you show up and get on a treadmill one time. <laughs> well, I tried it. It didn't work. So I might as well go and eat this donut. You mean the one you were eating while you were on the treadmill? <laughs> Doing donut curls? <laughs> Say this out loud with me. Consistency, Consistency. is the key, the key to the breakthrough. It's doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And things start changing. Then the Holy Spirit comes in there and starts doing some stuff. And then you fall in love with him. You believe his love. And now you're confident. And the stuff you used to do, now you don't want to do it no more. And the places you used to go, you don't want to go down no more. And then you start shrinking your circle because you try to figure out, how did you ever get in my circle? <laughs> it's all right for you to shrink your circle. It's all right for you looking at the light. Oh, that's why I've been acting like that. I let a fool in my circle. 
Amen. All right, let's go to number four. Let's go to number four. I want to get this done today. All right, so here's the fourth uh, uh, subject that's being taught in the Bible that teaches us complete dependence upon God. Um, multiplied admonitions to pray are repeated reminders of the believer's dependence upon God. Admonitions or counsels over and over again urging you, you need to pray about something. What is this prayer thing? It's, it's not, prayer is not this, um, you know, this, this, it's this little magical thing you do and to make God do something. That's, that's not, that's not, that's not, there are people praying all the time and, 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 and because of his mercy and grace, maybe some things break loose or maybe because of the prayer of other people, but it, 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 this is about depending on him. It's like I'm praying because I depend on him. I'm not praying because I'm desperate. That's what most people do. I'm praying, I pray because I depend on him. I pray, it's like, I got to pray, not because somebody's making me pray, but because I have submitted myself to him, I depend on him. And part of my dependence on him moves me to pray. It moves me to communication. Look at these scriptures with me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 17. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and then 1 Timothy 2, 8. Let's look at about four scriptures on, on prayer and really talk about this. This is, this is so important. I pray because I depend on God. I pray because I depend on God. I don't pray because I'm, I'm looking for something, some magic, hap, uh, magic, magic thing to happen. I pray because I depend on God. All right? I depend on Him. I depend. I'm, I'm not separating my prayer from depending on God. Well, I'm going to pray because I'm going to make something happen. When it happens, I'll tell people, I prayed. That's why that happens. No, 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 no. Prayer is, is a part of my curriculum of complete dependence upon God. All right, look at verse 17, very short. He says, pray without ceasing. That simply means don't cease to pray as it demonstrates your dependence upon God. He doesn't say pray without ceasing, meaning once you start praying, just pray all your life without a break. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about don't cease to pray as a result of your complete dependence upon God. I get that. I get that. That if I say I'm dependent upon God, then I'm going to pray. When I say I'm dependent upon God, no matter what people think about speaking in tongues, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost because the Bible says, I'm going to pray in my most holy faith, speaking in tongues. That's what the Bible says. And he says when you do that, you build yourself up, spirit, soul, and body. So I do that. I'm not going to do it to offend anybody, but I, I, that's a part of my depending on God, especially when I just can't figure nothing out. I can't figure out even how to ask God about this situation. I go to praying in tongues. Somebody says, how long are you going to pray until I, until I get peace? Until, until there's a peace that comes over me that says, you're good. And, I, and I'm, I, that's a part of my depending on God. That my, that's a part of my dependent on God. You know, yesterday, uh, I, was, I was sitting and in, in, in getting some treatment, and, and I thought, well, I'm not doing anything. Let me go ahead and just pray. Why? Because I depend on God. There are all kinds of opportunities for you to pray. Somebody says, well, I ain't got time to pray for an hour. Who said you had to pray for an hour? The Bible. No, it didn't. <laughs> The, Jesus asked the question, he says, could you not pray with me for an hour? He was asking the disciples the ones he said to pray. And he says, you couldn't pray for me even an hour? And then somebody else took that and said, see, you got to pray for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I'm guilty. I taught a whole series on how you got to pray for an hour. <laughs> Until I got tired one morning and went in there and, and I said, oh boy, here we go. I sure ain't looking forward to this. God like me neither. You ever went in another kind of prayer and you're praying, oh, Lord, I thank you. Oh, God, I, I thank you. Thank you for my mama, my daddy, my kid. 
And you look at the clock, ain't but a minute went by. Like, God, no. <laughs> no, this is a part of me depending upon God. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 8. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and, and verse 8. We do this because this is a part of our complete package, our complete dependence upon God. He says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or without doubt. He said, that's, that's my will. I want, I want them to pray. I want men to pray everywhere. He said, that's my ultimate will. I want men to, to receive my grace. I want to be able to teach all. Oh, I want to, that, that's my will. If, if he's telling us to pray, it's got to have something to do. I pray because I depend on God. I communicate with him. He talks to me. I, depend. I, have to, I have to hear from him. You mean to tell me God speaks to you? Yeah. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Glory be to God. He expects for you to hear. Don't let the world talk you out of the truths of this gospel of grace. Yes, I expect to hear from God. That's, that's, that's the game changer in our lives. There should be things going on in the lives of Christians that when, when unsaved people look at you, they should say, how'd you get that to happen? You ought to say, well, I, I, God told me. You mean God speaks to you? Yeah, you ought to try it. Lift your hands up. I'll lead you to Jesus and introduce you to him. Yeah, when we walk in the room, the atmosphere ought to change because there's an anointing on every last one of you. You're not, just, you're not just Christians. God lives in you. And get ready. Everything's failing. This is a big setup. This is a big setup. God's setting this whole thing up so he can show out in you. He, listen, he's doing no different than he did Abraham. I'm going to wait till he turn 100. I'm going to wait till she turns 90. And then at the set time, somebody shout set time. Get that tape from Wednesday. At the set time, He's going to show up and do what he does. And I am telling you, this is going on our six months of teaching on the gospel of grace. And God is setting you up so that when the news announces this is not failing or, or this is failing and that's failing and all oh, the stock market and oh, your, 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 your 401k, oh, and all, oh, it won't bother you one bit. Why? Because you have made your mind up that I completely depend on God anyway. I knew you weren't going to have no food and God already showed me what to do. I knew your sister were going to fail, but God's already spoken to me. Hallelujah. If he can speak to a Joseph and prepare them for a hard time, he can speak to you and I and prepare us. Get ready, church. Get ready. Something awesome, something magnificent is about to take place in you and in me. Praise God. And part of this is making a decision to live in complete dependence upon God. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Look at uh, this next verse, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. You see, in prayer, one expresses a need that he himself is unable to satisfy. And then he acknowledges dependence upon God to supply that which is needed. And so I go to prayer as we do. Have no idea how to handle this, Lord, or something that was brought to my attention that I know I can't do by myself. And I go before you and say, Lord, I need you to help me with this. I realized today that setting myself aside was a lot more than what I thought, and I, I need you to help me with this. And so I know you love me, so I'm not questioning whether or not you will be a very present help, but I want to make sure that you know that I depend on you. I depend on you. I rely on you. I trust you. And I thank you, Lord, that as we start this journey, that I'll gather wisdom from this. And, uh, and you'll begin to walk with this. Now, now, listen to this. This is a key statement for today. The essence of prayer 
is acknowledgement of helplessness coupled with confidence in God to supply the need. The essence of prayer is the, is the acknowledgement of helplessness. When was the last time you went to God as someone that says, I, I can't do this without you? And, and, and I used to just think I do that when something's big and significant happens. I'm finding that I'm doing that like every day just with my life and the things I have to do in my life. I don't have to struggle with this all my life. I don't have to carry this all my life. I, I, I go to God and I go to him not as someone who doesn't need help, but I go to him clearly saying, I am acknowledging that I am helpless in this area. But I'm also acknowledging the confidence in you to supply what I need. That's changed my life. It, it, it's, it's a humbling thing for me to keep reminding myself that I am not all that. You either. <laughs> Some of you think you're all that. No, you're not. No, you're not. There's something so powerful that happens. When you pray, I believe the most powerful prayer around. Help me. Glory to God. I'm feeling moody today, Lord. Help me. I'm a little honorary. Help me. And I trust that you have the supply that I need. And just getting up from that place of communicating with God, there's a strength that's released upon you that says, I have a God who loves me. I have a God who can help me. I'm never alone. And you walk away from that place and you declare, and never again will I declare that I'm broken. Because I'm in relationship with a mender. I'm in a relationship with a master potter. Glory to God. He'll take the good clay and mix it with the bad clay and make a masterpiece. You got to go in the kill in order to shine. <laughs> but it's going to be all right. Nobody in here knows what nobody in here has really gone through. You might know about what they've gone through, but until you can, can read the insides and, and the battles of their mind, and you don't know what they have gone through. It's not just as simple as you would like it to be. And I tell you, you look around you, you see a bunch of miracles sitting around who God has helped. God has helped me. Somebody say, what's going on? God has helped me. I've been helped for, by, the, by the Almighty God. And then you say like they did in Abraham's day, is there anything too hard for God? And you know how we are. I can be a witness. Let me be a witness. I think and I praise God huh, that I went to sleep last night, but I hadn't slept in one week. Huh. I think and I praise God. Huh. I didn't have nothing to eat, but I looked at in the back, in the real, real back, and I found a can of poking beans. I think and I pray. You got to learn how to thank God. If you're going to enter into this time of prayer and depend on God, you got to start thanking God before you see the manifestation. You got to start shouting before anything ever happens. You got to start living that life life of thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. Now, let me show you where that gets you. Let me show you where that gets you. To pray without ceasing is to maintain a constant attitude of dependence upon God. It's not to pray without ceasing to maintain prayer for 24 hours. It's to maintain a constant, consistent dependence upon God. This whole thing is about dependence upon God. Everything that happened in the Garden of Eden was over dependence upon God. And when they decided to eat of the fruit of that tree, when the devil said this one statement, 
you're like God. You will be like God. They thought, well, praise. I don't need to depend on him because I'm going to be like him. Everything's about that. It's almost like we almost missed the whole boat because of religion. This Christianity is not about the show. It's not about me figuring out a way where I can show out how anointed I am. Give me that line, that line, that line. No, 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 I, I depend on God. In fact, I depend on God so much, I don't feel the need to do those things like I used to do them. I still do them, but I depend on God. God has done some amazing things and is doing some amazing things. And that's, I want to meet him. I want to meet him knowing that he's, he's meeting one of his children and say, son, you really depended on me. Yeah, Lord, I'm here because I depended on you. What a ride. It's going to happen one day. I'm, I'm just not waiting till the last minute to try to get it together. I must be, it's going to be eternity. I'm not, be, I'm not playing church and I'm going to, this is going to be over with one day. You're going to die one day. And as stupid as this world is, my prayer is that you'll be protected so your life is not snuffed out before it's time. That's the blessing I pray over you, world changes, that you will not die before your time. If they fire off a bullet, it shall not hit you. A thousand, oh, glory to God, shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come through you. Why? You depend on God. I'm not going to be afraid to go to Walmart because somebody got shot last week. When I walk up in Walmart, all of Walmart ought to be glad I walked up in there because every plan of the devil has to change because I walked up in there. I depend on God. A constant attitude of depending on God. Gosh, Pastor, why are you hollering? This stuff is so real to me. There are lots of things that people play with, but this one thing about, you know, what's going to happen when I die? Nah, we ain't, we ain't playing with that. You know, it's an eerie thing to prepare your life, your insurance, your will, your ceremony. You know, I just finished doing that not too long ago, and it's weird. But it's pretty simple. Basically, when I die, throw me in a box, put me in the thing. I don't, nobody needs to be there. Just put me in a, in a hole. And if y'all want to have something afterwards, that's up to y'all. But I'm not even going to be here. I don't care. <laughs> Paul said, what, I, I fought a good fight, and I kept the faith. Well, well who's going who's gonna to take her after you go? Well, I don't plan on going nowhere for a minute. I mean, like a long minute. I want to see what it feels like preaching grace at 100. I met some people re recently, they said, Crepple Doll? He said, oh man, I thought you were dead. I'm like, what? <laughs> nah, bruh. <laughs> I depend on God, help me now, help me. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the life of Christianity, man. It's... It's the world seeing and watching us depend on, on God, not ourselves. We're not trying to be like the world and try to outdo them. <clears throat> I was looking at a role that I was, you know, practicing, and I looked down at the role and I was playing the part of a police chief. And this was a little different because it had some, uh, some cussing words in it. I was like, wow. 
you know, the three letter cussing words. I said, so you want me to do that? He said, yeah. And so I tried it and I'm like, ooh, I am not going to lose my ministry that I walked in for 41 years for a three letter cussing word. Now, some people get it. They say, oh, well, that's just acting. Not church folks. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He could for real. I said, I won't say nothing in the roll. I ain't say it at church. But it was just something about, you know, I, I, I depended on God so much in areas of my life and character. Uh, that is never going to be important to me. It was, a, it was a quick test. And I thought, nah, it ain't worth it. Get somebody else to do it. I don't care. Now listen to this. Go to Ephesians chapter 5 and 20. I think we'll finish this. We got 12 minutes. Somebody said, you go by the clock? Yeah, y'all got something to do. Don't go by the clock. I can't stay up here a long time. People be like, ooh, the pastor don't ever shut up, do it. <laughs> no, I stick with the clock. When that clock go off, I'm off. <laughs> well, what if you don't finish it? Well, ask the Holy Ghost. He'll tell you the rest of it. <laughs> That's why we want this relationship with God. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. He said, giving thanks always for all things unto God, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks always for God. Uh, and so here's the, one, the only one who is, who, who is completely dependent on God, only one who is completely dependent on God can give thanks always for all things. We're talking about all the things of God. We give thanks in all things, but not for all things in the other scripture. So there is no finer expression of dependence upon God than in giving thanks. Now this is important. This is an amazing expression of depending upon God when you give thanks. Listen to this carefully now. Prayer acknowledges one's dependence upon God in times of need. Prayer acknowledges one's dependence upon, dependence upon God in a time of need. Thanksgiving, however, acknowledges dependence when the need is satisfied. Thanksgiving acknowledges dependence when the need is satisfied. Prayer acknowledges your dependence upon God in a time of need. One is acknowledging dependence on God in the time of need. The other one, Thanksgiving, is acknowledging dependence on God after the need is satisfied. Now, you'll remember this in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 and 18. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm taking this from, Luke 17, 11 and 18. You, the story of the 10 lepers. The 10 lepers were there. They were in need of being healed. And they came before Jesus and uh, they got healed. All right. But only one came back to say thank you. And Jesus was like, what happened to the other nine? See, what happens is that that doesn't need to take place in our life where, you know, we are dependent on God when we need something but we're not acknowledging th that dependence on God after we got it. That's amazing to me, how God can do something amazing in your life and you, ain't, you, you don't, you don't, you, you, you never, you never thank him. Of course, I think you ought to think about ahead of time, but it's like Thanksgiving after I have received the blessing is still acknowledging I depend on God. I am thanking the one I depend on. I'm acknowledging I depend on him. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. I am thanking you because I depend on you to heal me. I am thanking you because I depend on you to meet my needs. I am thanking you because you opened the door. I prayed about it, and you talked to me about it, and the door was open, and I am now expressing continuous dependence upon you through my thanksgiving. Boy, you will notice something taking place in your life when you begin to start thanking God continuously for the things that he's done. It'll keep you out of complaining. 
So start to maybe, maybe start today. There's some things God just did this past week. And you're like, Lord, I appreciate that. But I am, I am continuously demonstrating my dependence upon him through thanksgiving. But what happens is if you don't really depend on him from this point, and this will happen to a lot of people, God blesses them. It's amazing to me. People just really forget about what God does. You need to pause every now and then and just count your blessings, man. Just count your blessings and, and, and allow God to, to be who he needs to be. And then finally today, uh, Romans chapter 4 and 6, number 5, the very nature of grace by itself demands dependence upon God. The very nature of grace by itself demands um, dependence upon God. Romans 4, 16, and, and here's what he says. And I told you this before, that grace makes, or Jesus makes, and then faith takes. And so Romans 4 and 16, he talks about, there is, uh, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. It is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but of that which is of the faith of Abraham. And so grace being God's infinite, unmerited provision for every need, this grace, it is complete in itself without any additions or anything from man. The grace of God is complete all by itself without any additions. It is unmerited, abounding provision in the operation of God's unrestricted, infinite love that, is, that comes only through Jesus Christ for mankind, especially for those who depend upon him. It doesn't need anybody, it doesn't need any more input into it. It, it doesn't. The, the, grace doesn't need any more input. Grace it, it itself is without addition of anything by man. My God, it is only because of his grace that God asked man to live in dependence upon him. Only because of his grace that God asked man to live in dependence upon him. His grace doesn't need anything from a man, but a man needs everything from his grace. Are uh, you seeing what I'm saying? It doesn't require. And religion is always trying to add something to something that don't need nothing added to it. It's amazing to me. Will Jesus Christ recognize the church when he come back? Or will he come back and say, what's that? Why are they doing that? Grace doesn't need anything added to it. It doesn't need you doing this. It, 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 it's not Jesus plus what you can add to it. It's not grace plus what you can add to it. So God, by grace, by his grace, permitted us, wants us to be dependent on him. Why? Because he got whatever you need Amen. through his grace. That's a powerful thing, man. Grace on God's part and dependence upon the part of a man, those things are in inseparable. Grace on God's part, dependence on our part. I don't even know how to make that, I don't even know how to reduce that anymore. It's like, here's your Christian life. Grace, that's, that's this unrestricted love of God, God, everything you'll ever need. That's God's part. Dependence, that's our part. So what, what you doing? What else you doing? Who else book you gonna tell me you read and you got the eight steps of this? Is it, does it equal your dependence on this part? I, I know where I'm going. In fact, next week, I'm gonna hit something so religious and so tradition. No, oh, it's gonna be, I'm gonna hit the tide. I'm gonna hit it. It's just this, it just don't make no sense to me how you can be under grace and think you can still be cursed. You are cursed with a curse if you don't bring the tithe. And you, you, you don't think anything's wrong with that? You don't, you don't think anything's wrong with the author of probably a third or more of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, wrote everything 
and just did not say nothing at all about the tithe, but he did say 12 things about giving. He said a lot of stuff about giving, but why did he not say something about the tithe? Huh? <laughs> and the whole deal about Abraham, Genesis 14, that's all about dependence. All right. yeah. When Abraham gave the tithe to Melchizedek, who brought the bread and wine, which was a foreshadowing of Jesus, he brought Jesus. Jesus showed up that day. He was going to show you who, this is who you have to depend on. And the Bible says he gave a tithe. What he really gave was his complete dependence. Here, I depend on God. Just go ahead and slap yourself if you don't plan on being here next Sunday. Just slap yourself on both sides of your cheek. I've been prepared for this sermon for years. I need to finish this one first. <laughs> Godly living in this age is only possible under grace. Thank you, baby. That life, which is in complete dependence upon God, is not dominated by sin. Because the essence of sin is dependence upon self instead of dependence upon God. But when you depend upon God, you're not going to be dominated by sin. Listen to this. The only way you're going to be dominated by sin is you're going to have to depend on yourself. When you start depending on God, you, you're not going to be dominated by sin. That's why Paul said in, in um, Romans 6, 14, put that up so everybody can see it. This is, this is the very reason why Paul said what he said in Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you're under grace. And when you live a life under grace where you are com in complete dependence upon God, you are not dominated by sin. The only way you can be dominated by sin is when you live a life un, uh, dominated by yourself. That's, that's how that happens. Because isn't all sin based in selfishness? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The devil want to take credit for some of your sins, but he can't. <laughs> to be completely dependent upon God and to deserve to do his will and glorify him are the basic principles of, the, of godly living. It is only by the, dis, the discipline of grace that these characteristics are developed in our human life. Total dependence upon God. Godliness, complete dependence upon God. Am I godly? Do you depend on God? Well, I'm saved. Yeah. Do you depend on God? Godly living depends on God. Well, I go to church every now and then. No, 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 that doesn't make you godly, especially the every now and then part. <laughs> Complete dependence on God equals godly living, period. I'm trying to work through all of the clutter, the religious clutter that just, I was, I was teaching a, a a Bible class in uh, Colorado at, uh, uh, what's the name of the school? Karis Bible School. And uh, I was asking some questions. And it, it happens with every class, no matter where it is. It, 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 even in our school, it happens that way. I asked a question that has a very, very specific answer. And I get all these church answers. And they're so general, you can't really say they're wrong. They're just not precise. It's like, where is the key to the front door? The key to the front door is at 1131 Johnson Avenue. Well, that's right, but I still can't find the key. Where is the key at the front door? It's in the back of the house. Well, that's right, but I can't find the key. Where is the key to the front door? It's on one of the windows. Well, God, no. Can you tell me which one? <laughs> that's how we do, that's how we do with, with, with our Christian life. 
We got to be hungry for precision. Where's the key to the house? It's in the back under the flower pot on the right hand side. And I, I was just, just amazed. I'm like, you guys are going out to be preachers and you're, you're giving religious answers. And that's just not for leaders, it's for everybody in here who's living the Christian life. What is grace? Well, uh, you know, grace is, uh, grace is kind of like, a, you know, it's, it's, it's favor that you didn't work for and you didn't deserve. You know, you're quoting the most famous thing. And uh, the grace of God is, uh, well, if it's favor, how does favor teach me? Uh, well, let's see, uh, you know, when God do you a favor, uh, the favor kind of teaching you that God, God can do a favor. <laughs> and and I, my heart goes out to the new believer because they're like, you're a Christian and you don't even understand who you are? And we use words that we think people should understand. Oh, you have an anointing. You're like, what's a, a what? A, 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 what did it say? An appointment? A, no, an anointment. Uh, we got we to gotta, we gotta bring this thing on so that, so that the, the newest of Christian can understand where we're coming from. But now we don't want to do that because we've been saved for 50 some odd years. And you don't know I've been in church since I was four years old. Holy do you think? Thank you, Jesus. And I know the Lord. Holala And you come trying to tell me that godliness, hey, it's just dependent on God. No, 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 no. Alalabasha. Godliness is how you dress. This, you got to dress like me because if you're not dressed like me, listen, that, that there ain't going to be no sinners on this train. This train don't carry no liars. Well, it sure carries some fornicators and some other stuff in that train. But I'm telling you, You're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. And you're just as fed up with it as I am fed up with it. And I tell you, Jesus is on his way back, and we are not going to walk past him like we don't know him. We're going to get to know him right now. We're going to get to know him in the Word. We're going to get to know him when we study, when we pray. We're going to get to know him through our complete dependence for him. And my time is all up. Did you get anything out of this today? We'll quickly just lift your hands up in reverence to God just for a moment. Lord, we just declare that your word has been received. We take it, and we are in complete dependence upon you. Help us, Holy Spirit, in this journey. Teach us continuously to walk in godliness. And we honor you, and may we get more and more revelation from what we heard today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. If you're on the screen or if you're here right now, if you could hold your walking just for a moment. You might want to get that final prayer, too. There's some stupid stuff going on. It's like somebody told folks. It's like there's a demon in people saying, get a gun and just shoot. And it's not going to be just about reforming gun laws. That's okay. Do something, but it's going to be about renewing some minds as well. Folks need to get saved. Washington needs a pastor. Politicians can't deal with this kind of stuff. These things are demonically motivated and activated. Look at the picture of all the shooters. Their eyes are going somewhere else. You're like, this boy got a demon and they don't even know what's going on. And when you don't understand demonic influence, you, you just top it all off to mental health. And you have been given authority. And in the name of Jesus, you call on that authority you have right now. That today I will live and I will not die. And when I go off, I will come back home safely. I move in the safety of the arms. You release your authority right now. There are, there are shootings. There's so many of them, they can't even report them all. Now, in the name of Jesus, the world changes nation. We come together now in agreement. We bind every vow spirit. And in the name of Jesus, we command shootings to cease right now. Every demon that is behind 
behind these mass shootings, every devil that's suggesting these shootings, we now take authority of it. We, we cast you out. We command you to submit to the word of Jesus Christ. You cease in your maneuvers in Jesus' name. We depend on you. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. If you're here and you're not born again, make that happen today. If you're on the stream, you're not born again, let's do it now. Pray the simple prayer with me, Heavenly Father. I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of all my sins. I receive the free gift of your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I believe. I believe in you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. So by faith, I declare that I'm saved. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, you are born again. Praise God. To be absent from the body, you'll be present with the Lord. Amen. Those of you who are at home, dial that uh, uh, 515555 on the screen. Give us your name, email address, and we'll send you something to help you out. Those of you who prayed that prayer in the dome, we're going to open our altar up in just a moment. But let's go ahead and finish our final uh, part of our worship today. The giving of gifts in honor and in appreciation and out of love and gratitude for what God has already done for us, praise the Lord. That we honor the Lord with our gifts. That we say to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, we respect you, we are grateful to you. Oh Lord, we honor what you've told us in the word about giving. But Father, we just wanna worship you with our gifts. We wanna give glory to your name by bringing an offering and worshiping you in the beauty of your holiness. So at this time, if you need an offering envelope, if you'll raise your hands and the uh, ushers will be more than happy to get one to you. Um, if you're at home, the four ways to give on the stream are located there along with a QR code. Uh, you can go ahead and do what you need to do there. Also, if you go to the website, those of you who have PayPal accounts, you can go ahead and use that account. Uh, to do what you need to do there. This is to me, and maybe you can be convinced once you see it, it's, it's a vital part. It's like my worship, everything we did today. This is the part that I can, with no selfishness, I can go in and say, God, I am honoring you because I want to. I respect you. I am in love with you. And I am so grateful for what you have done this Thanksgiving and I completely completely depend upon you. I'm grateful that I have something to give today, and I'm thankful that you will take care of everything that concerns me in Jesus' name. That's what this is all about, giving unto the Lord the glory that's due unto his name. And there can be no glory giving without complete dependence upon him. By depending on God, he gets the glory because you depend on God. And there's no greater way to prove that than actually when you're giving away from yourself. You're saying, I'm doing this depending on God. There have been times in Taffy in our life we gave and man, we could have used that, what we gave. <laughs> really, and a lot, a lot of y'all, not just Taffy and I, but um, we gave it depending on God. And every time he came through, every time he came through, I ain't fussing with people. Cause anytime I say anything, somebody say, oh, he's a prosperity preacher, whatever. <laughs> You know, you'd have missed a whole 12 years of other stuff. You want to come back. He's a prosperity preacher. Yes. All right. So shut up about it. <laughs> Amen. But that's what we're dealing with today. So as you give, do that in mind. Let's just go ahead and receive the offering. Those of you at home, go ahead and give. When we finish this, we'll open the altar up and then go ahead and give the final blessing.
Those of you this morning, you believe with all your heart that God has called you to join World Changes Church International. If that's you, if you'll get your Bibles and personal belongings and come on down at this time. Those of you who prayed that prayer of salvation and uh, you got saved this morning, would you please come on down and get your personal belongings? And uh, those of you who are on the stream, if you'd like to become a part of our e-church, you can go to the website, go to worldchanges.org and click join at the top of the page. Or you can text join WCCI, all one word, to 51555. And we will send you all the benefits of e-membership. God bless you and welcome to World Changers E-Church membership. Praise the Lord. If you're here, come on down, come on down, come on down. A new day, a new way. Praise God. Amen. Okay. So, Father, we thank you so much for those who've come down here today, and I ask you bless them and just turn their lives into a place of tremendous blessings. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll turn this way and follow this gentleman to the prayer room, they're going to take you and minister to you and give you what you need. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, in my old church, they used to say it like this, if all hearts and minds are clear, you may stand. Thank y'all so much for coming and being with us this morning. We pray that it was a blessing into your life. I love you guys too. Um, now for the final blessing, lift your hands up. May the God of all comfort and the God of all grace be with you throughout this week. I declare the blessing of God over your life. I declare the protection of God over your life. And therefore, I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I thank my God in heaven for you that everything that concerns you, God is perfecting it right now. I declare that the angels of God watch over you lest you dash your foot against the stone. I declare over your life that you will live with long life and you will be satisfied. I declare that no weapons formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, you condemn. And now on to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a great day. You asked and we answered. We know there are friends of the ministry who prefer CDs and DVDs. But for those of you who find the digital versions of messages better fit your life, Creflo and Taffy Dollar's message series are now available as digital downloads in the CYWE store. Log on to CYWEstore.com today to see the whole catalog of new and re-release messages that can be downloaded to any device for easy and convenient listening.